Do we really need another bit-perfect music player? Yes, but only if it takes the concept a giant step further. Rune Labs might be a new company. Its history goes back about 10 years when Peter Welikov, Enno Vendermeer and Danny Dulai started Zulus, a networked audio player environment that, from an ICT point of view, was truly high-end. Sound-wise, it was scaled in a lower level until Meridian acquired Zulus and brought it the audio quality up to the Meridian level. When I reviewed Zulus a couple of years ago, I was heavily impressed by the user interface and the approach towards metadata, which was governed by Zulus headquarters. The Zulus system started as a closed system, meaning that the user is limited in what he can change in the system, with the purpose to keep the system as stable as possible. Hard drives were limited to one terabyte later 2 terabytes and adding a NAS was not facilitated for a long time. If you wanted to expand, Sulos offered corporate grade storage at ditto prices. Nowadays certain NASs can be added, a clear indication the market is changing. Market change also made the Sulos software team split up from Meridian and start their own company. They will continue to develop for the Meridian Zulus product, but have also released their own universal Rune software product, based upon the 10 years of Zulus knowledge and experience. The unique feature of Zulus software is the quality of the metadata and the way you can navigate through it. I haven't had a hands-on with a Zulus product for some years now, but the Rune software seems to offer a lot more than the Sulus I reviewed back in the day. What remained is the professional ICT approach that allows for multiplayer and multi-room setups. In this video I will try to give you an impression of the user interface, the metadata quality and browsing the library. I will, for now, consider Rune to be just a standalone player like iTunes, Orivana and others. In the next video I will describe the networked system functions and possibilities which too differs from that of other products. Rumor has it a lot of compatible third party hardware will be introduced on the 2016 Consumer Electronics Show, so expect the next video around that time. When you start using Rune, you'll have to specify where your music is located. It then automatically starts indexing your music and, when that's done, it will try to link to more comprehensive metadata from the Rune database. The last step is to analyse the loudness of each track. The last two steps are done in the background and can take days, depending on the size of your music collection, the speed of your computer and the speed of your internet connection. After starting up, you'll enter the overview window. Here you have an overview of your recently added music and further down Rune suggests music to you and if you have a Tidal subscription it also shows their new and top albums plus playlists. Along the lower side the actual player is visible with left the transport buttons, a link to the playlist a graphical representation of the music playing, the track name and artist playing and the bright star on the right of the track name can be clicked to see the audio path. In this case the source is an ALEC file sent via Core Audio Exclusive mode to the Hugo DAC. On the right the heart shape lets you set your favourite and band tracks. The microphone gives you access to the track lyrics, the Hugo speaker shows what output is used. Clicking this icon gives access to the other outputs known to Rune. The speaker symbol on the right opens the volume control when ac activated. Now let's see what albums by Joe Cocker I have. I click on the menu in the top left, select Artist and type Joe. Rune immediately jumps to the artist starting with Joe. You see Joe Henry, Joe Farrell, Joe Dassin 
and Joe Cocker. Let's click Joe Cocker and enter the overview of his work. When we click on the text you will see the full bio mentioning Jennifer Warnes. Just another click and you see her bio and her albums, but also albums she contributed to and the album's title offers. You also see the James Taylor's Dead Loves His Work album twice. Rune can hide or delete double albums, but in this case the left one is the original issue and the right one is the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab reissue, as you can see indicated with the MFSL abbreviation. You can also see that the Burj Jansch album is an MP3 waiting to be replaced for an ALEC rip as soon as I find the album over here at a sensible price. The Roy Orbison album on the right is the opposite, a DSD64 rip of the SACD. Well, let's look at Jennifer Warren's work. I own two famous blue raincoats, the original CD release from 87 and a louder remaster from 2007. I prefer the original. So I click that one and immediately you see the description and tracks. Click the play album button and you can start playing the, the album, add it as next or at the end of the queue. I have started it as can be seen in the timeline at the bottom of the screen. I had to mute the music due to copyright restrictions. When I click in the left lower corner on the playlist icon, the playback queue is shown. On the right you see the radio function switched on. When all music in the queue has been played, Rune starts playing similar music. In most cases this works remarkably well. I often have to search for music that fits my mood of that moment, but when I found it the radio function keeps pleasing me. Now let me get back to the album by clicking on the album name and show you the credits function. Here you see the label, the performers, notice Van Dyke Parks and watch the list of guitar players that include C. Roscoe Beck. Michael Landau and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Let's click on Stevie. And here we are, all the work I have on him. You might notice the versions of Couldn't Stand the Weather. From left to right the CD version, a down converted version from DSD at 2488, the ripped SACD and the Tidal version. Just click one of the albums and you get all the details there. But let's get back to Jennifer Warnes. You might have noticed the mic symbols. Let's click one and you'll see the lyrics of that track First We Take Manhattan. Nice isn't it? Now let's go for a totally different way of searching music and start with the album view. Now we select focus and open the time window. Let's start with the 70s and tweak the beginning to 1968 and leave the end to 79. Now I also want to limit the choice to some genres. Let's go for rock, R&B, prog rock and blues. Then I would only like to see the DSD albums. Or let's select all the high res albums. I see I have the CCR album mentioned twice, so let's open it and open the other version button. It appears I even have three versions, a 20-bit K2 version and twice the 24176 version. To delete one I go up one level, go to the album pane, click right on the album I want to delete, click on edit in the right top corner, scroll down and select delete tracks. You might have noticed the pulsating circle in the top left of the screen. That's the way Rune tells you about functions you encounter for the first time. In the beginning they are all over the screen waiting to be clicked. Let's click this one. It tells that I am focused on a portion of my library and that the focus is displayed on the right of the circle and that the focus can be lifted by pressing reset.
When I reviewed the Sulu some years ago, classical music wasn't covered very well, as with most players to be honest. I don't know how well Sulu's does it now, but Rune does it uniquely. And you can use Rune to operate Sulu's by the way. To see what I mean, let's switch to Artists and search for Mary Kodama by typing Mary. After clicking on the icon, I see the overview of her work. Now let's select the Beethoven piano sonatas and scroll down a bit. Now you see the three parts of the piano sonata number 16 grouped together. Let me first show you the credits again, simply because the production crew consists not only of my fellow countrymen, but also the finest recording professionals around that are responsible for loads of great recordings on the Philips Classics and Pentatone labels. But let's play this work and go to the playback queue. You now only see Piano Sonata number 16 mentioned and not, as with other software, three separate tracks. These tracks are approached by Rune as one work comprised of three parts that are available through three small icons. To give you another example, let's go to Wagner and pick Der Fliegende Holländer. You see the same. The name of the complete work and all the parts. And when you play this and go to the play queue, you see all the parts in the top right part of the screen. Another nice feature for especially classical music is that an album box is kept together as one album containing several discs, as you can see here. The Götter Dameron comprises of four discs and if you like to see other opera work, you just click the opera label to get to all the opera work in your library. It's impossible to completely cover the Rune user interface and the possibilities the extensive metadata offers. I have been living with Rune for over a month now and still discover new features and interesting ways of working every day. I use and I have used many software and hardware players including iTunes, JRiver, Audivana, Amara, Pure Music, Squeezebox, Sonos, Simple Audio, Rune Audio, Volumio, Empad, Blue Sound and many DLA players. But I know of none that even come close to the quality and accessibility of the metadata, the relations it makes between the music and persons and the speed of the interface, although the latter depends on the hardware used, of course. I did need to replace my iPad 3 with the current model, but my mid-2011 Mac Mini fitted with an SSD system drive worked fine. I will cover the hardware extensively in a second part of this review that will be due immediately after the 2016 CES show in Vegas. If you can't wait that long, Rune Labs offers a two week trial period to everyone. There might be a chance that you, my viewers, can do an extended trial. To see if that deal came through, check the extended trial link below this video on YouTube or find the review on the hbchannel.com. And, as always, if you want to remain informed, subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there. You'll find the information below this video on YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I'm Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you the next time or on the HBproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music.